Hi, welcome to the Organic Chemistry Lab series in my Organic Chemistry channel. In this video, I will talk about Fischer esterification. Esters are organic compounds. They are considered as derivatives of carboxylic acids that have the general formula, which is RCOOR. So esters are characterized by the presence of this functional group which makes them different from other types of organic compounds. Esters have characteristic odors and can be found in natural products, in fruits, in vegetables, in essential oils, and can be used as fragrances or solvents. These are just a few examples of esters in our daily life. This is ethyl acetate, which is usually used in the nail polish removal. Azoamyl acetate is responsible for the banana flavor. Phenyl acetate is have this rose um, fragrance and all other compounds. So esters are mainly responsible for some of the flavors or some of the um, smells of others of uh, organic com compounds. Esters are named as alkyl alkanoates. So when we name esters, we have to distinguish between two parts. The first part, which is this red one, which includes the R group and the carboxylate group. And this is named as alkanoate part. And then we have this alkyl group, which is bonded to the oxygen. And this is the alkyl part of the name, for example. In this ester here, if you want to name this ester, we will start by naming this alkyl group, which is connected to the oxygen. So we have two carbons. That's why this is ethyl. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. This is pentanoate. In this case here, the branch, which is connected to the oxygen, is an isopropyl group. So this is isopropyl. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. This is pentanoate. However, we have a methyl group here. And when you start numbering, you have to start count numbering from here. So this is one, two, three. And that's why you name this as a three methyl pentanoate. Same thing applies if branches exist on the alkyl part. So again, one, two, three, four. This is butyl. However, we have a methyl group here and a methyl group here. That's why we call it dimethyl. And then if I have to assign numbers, again, this is one, two, three. That's why my branches are at two and three. On the other side, I have one, two, three, four carbons. That's why this is butanoate. So this is how we name esters. The, um, the first method that we are going to talk about that can be used to um, prepare esters is the Fischer esterification method. Fischer esterification is a method which is used to synthesize esters and it was discovered by Emil Fischer in 1895. And in this method we will start with a carboxylic acid and then we will add an alcohol in the presence of H+. So this is an acid catalyzed reaction. And this leads to the formation of the ester group plus H2O. So basically what happens in this reaction is that this OH group will be replaced by this alkoxy group. And this is how we make esters. Now, the reaction is acid catalyzed. Usually H2SO4 or H3PO4 are used in this reaction in catalytic amounts. The reaction is reversible and this is one of its problems. And that's why yields are not so high unless we use distillation um, setups uh, or um, columns during reactions. Um, use, usually we use excess amount of the carboxylic acid to push the equilibrium and this so because of uh, Le Chatelier principle. So whenever you want to push the equilibrium, basically let's say to the right, you have to increase the amount of one of the reactants. In this case, we are going to increase the amount of um, of the acid to push the equilibrium to the right and increase the yield of the reaction. 
usually heat is needed to accelerate the reaction so this is a slow reaction usually in the presence of heat it's going to be a um, a faster reaction and that's why we use something which is called a reflux apparatus what is a reflux apparatus so basically um, uh, our reaction mixture will be here and it will be heated um, uh, in order to avoid losing our compounds our compounds which is the like the acid or the alcohol or the ester we are going to add a condenser now what happens is that this condenser this condenser will condense all the vapor which goes up so instead of losing this vapor uh, because of the presence of the condenser all the vapor will be condensed and it will go down and this will help us in uh, avoid losing material our reactants or our products because of heating so this is called a reflux condenser so this is basically the reflux apparatus is based on heating followed by evaporation followed by condensation in this process we ensure that our reaction mixture is being heated but we are not losing material because of the condensation process the reaction will be faster again because of heating and not we are not losing material because of evaporation because of the condensation of the material again now in terms of reactivity basically all alcohols can be can be used alcohols can be used in this reaction but as the size of the alkyl group increases the reactivity of the um, of the alcohol decreases this is because the nucle uh, the alcohol is acting as a nucleophile as we will see in the mechanism later on that the alcohol will act as a nucleophile and it will attack the carbonyl so as the uh, size of the alkyl group increases the nucleophilicity decreases it becomes harder to attack the carbonyl and that's why the reactivity order is methanol followed by primary alcohols followed by secondary alcohols and tertiary alcohols are very um, very slow the reaction is almost doesn't occur in the presence of bulky tertiary alcohols now this is a mechanism of the reaction so as i said before this is an acid catalyzed reaction why because using the acid the carboxylic acid without an acid catalyst will make the reaction very slow so to to uh, increase the reaction rate we use an acid catalyst and the role of the acid catalyst is the following so the first step is protonation of the oxygen of the carboxylic acid by H plus which is H2SO4 this protonation step will convert oxygen into OH plus this is a strong electron withdrawing group because of this strong electron withdrawing effect of this group now electrons will be shifted up this the partial positive charge which is the electrophilicity of this carbon will increase and upon increasing the electrophilicity of this carbon so now this uh, this carbon is more electron poor that's why this is going to facilitate or make the attack of the alcohol at this carbon easier and faster so now again if the alcohol has to attack this carbon this carbon is uh, is not that much highly electrophilic so it is electron poor but not that much so to increase the electrophilicity of this carbon we protonate the oxygen this will make the oxygen a strong electron withdrawing group and because of this the electrophilicity of this carbon will increase and this will make it a this will make the reaction faster the second step which is this step is the nucleophilic attack by the oxygen at this carbonyl and now this bond opens up and we end up with this tetrahedral intermediate we call it a tetrahedral intermediate because the carbon here has four bonds one two three four now the next step is a proton transfer proton transfer is usually something which we use in mechanisms just to make it easier so the point is that this hydrogen which is here is an extra hydrogen which i don't need later on in the product as you can see here now also what i want to do is i want to kick out this oh group so i don't want this oh group usually oh groups are very bad leaving groups so they don't leave one way to make them good leaving groups is by protonating them so what happens is the following 
this oxygen will lose this hydrogen this oxygen which is here will accept the hydrogen so we call it a proton transfer step where the proton is transferred from this oxygen to this oxygen and uh, we have a good leaving group here the next step is uh, the lone pairs of this oxygen will go down and it will kill out this h2o so now we have this intermediate this is very close to the ester however we just have this extra hydrogen which is here so minus h plus and this is how we get the esters of course if you want to show more details about the proton transfer step of uh, the um the uh, proton trans uh, proton loss step in this case we have to show the bases but this is not necessary especially for a lab now let's go back to our experiment in our experiment we will be synthesizing an butyl acet acetate so we will start with acetic acid we will add n-butanol and our product will be n-butyl acetate and of course it shows as a final as a byproduct acetic acid will be used in excess as i said before to push the equilibrium to the right to increase the yield of our reaction acetic acid will have a dual role it will act as a reactant and also as a solvent in this reaction h2so4 will be used as a catalyst and of course we have to reflux uh, in order to um, increase the yield and the rate of our reaction experimentally we are going to prepare the mixture reaction mixture which is mixing butanol acetic acid and sulfuric acid and then we will flux our reaction mixture for 30 minutes um, after that we will stop heating we will move the reaction flask up and let it cool down for some time once it cools down the mixture it will contain a mixture which consists of the ester which is a product the water which is a byproduct uh, the catalyst and the remaining acetic acid and alcohol so this these are the reactants which didn't work or which didn't react completely because this is a reversible reaction so we are going to add cold water to stop the reaction this is called quenching cold water will do two things first we are going to have two layers the bottom layer which is the aqueous layer or the water layer and it consists of water acetic acid and sulfuric acid the top layer which is the organic layer will contain our ester and the unreacted butanol so this is one way of stopping the reaction by separating the reactants from each other each one will move to a different layer and also this is one way of separating the product by moving it to the organic layer so there is there are two roles for adding water also cold water is used to minimize hydrolysis because if you use hot water hot water will hydrolyze the ester remember that whenever you have an ester if you use h2o in the presence of h plus this is going to cause hydrolysis what is hydrolysis converting the reaction back to carboxylic acid and alcohol so this is called hydrolysis hydrolysis is opposite to esterification if you use if you use hot water hot water will push the equilibrium back and it will cause the hydrolysis of the ester back into the carboxylic and alcohol that's why we use cold water then we add the reaction mixture um, to a separatory funnel and we add sodium carbonate sodium carbonate is a base it is used to neutralize the excess remember that we use h2so4 as a catalyst so we want to neutralize this acid and that's why you, uh, that's why we use sodium carbonate to neutralize the excess acid now we will notice that when sodium carbonate reacts with the sulfuric acid it's going to form co2 gas bubbles and that's why we will keep shaking the separatory funnel until no more gas is formed this indicates that no more sulfuric acid exists in the reaction mixture um, of course we cannot use NaOH um, to neutralize sulfuric acid because NaOH again will cause um, hydrolysis of the ester so if we have an ester and if we add OH minus to it we are going to get a 
um, the carboxylate, which is basic hydrolysis. So we will get a not the acid, but the carboxylate, which is usually called a soap plus the alcohol. So again, using any OH is not favorable. That's why we use a base which cannot act as a nucleophile because the problem here is that this OH minus can attack here, and that's why it hydrolyzes the ester. Sodium carbonate doesn't do this, and that's why we are using um, sodium carbonate instead of using any OH. Finally, we will collect the organic layer, which is the top layer in this experiment here, and then we will dry it over magnesium sulfate to get rid of the excess water droplets. The uh, organic layer will be decanted. We will pour the solution or the organic layer in uh, a separate flask, and then we can purify our compound by distillation. Um, the boiling point of butyl acetate is usually 126.1 degrees. Now let's talk about the calculations a little bit. Acetic acid is used in excess, so anbutanol will be the limiting reagent, uh, which is going to be used to calculate the amount of anbutyl acetate. Again, if you have the mass of anbutanol, and you divide it by the molar mass of butanol, which is 74.12, you can get the number of moles of butanol. And the number of moles of butanol is, and is equal to the number of moles of the ester. Since this is a one-to-one -one ratio reaction. Once we calculate the number of moles of ester, this implies that we can calculate the mass of ester, which is equal to number of moles times molar mass of the ester, which is 116.16. This is going to be the theoretical mass of the ester. Again, to calculate the percentage yield of the reaction, you just have to divide this theoretical mass, or actually the actual mass, which you obtained in the lab, by the theoretical mass times 100. And this is how you get the percentage yield of the reaction.